All right, we'll go to the next question. How do I know if I'm called to preach? My family depends on my income and I don't want to unwisely step into anything against God's will, but I feel I must evangelize more, much more than I can now. Okay, let me read this one, one more time and really think about this. How do I know if I'm called to preach? My family depends on my income and I don't want to unwisely step into anything against God's will, but I feel I must evangelize more than I can now. Um, I mean, if you're, I think that your first priority right now is taking care of your family's expenses. And, and let me give you, let me give you a reason for that. That's not about not trusting God or anything along those lines, right? Um, um, it's in the pastoral epistles, first Timothy five, eight. Okay. This is, this is interesting because. Um, it relates to your situation a little bit. It says, if, if anyone does not provide for his own relatives and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So this means to me that even though you feel that you have this burning desire to go and evangelize more or go and preach more, uh, and by this, I'm, I'm assuming you're doing evangelism and not like, uh, ministry to the body, like within a, within like, say a Christian environment. But when you want to do these things more, until those things naturally are supporting you, you have to continue that job and make sure you're taking care of your family because that is, a, is, is your priority. It's not because you're trusting in material things. It's because you see these human beings before you and know that you're responsible for providing for them. And that is, that is something that comes like as a requirement for every Christian. What I, what I don't like is how some... It, this happened many years ago, but some would teach people to go into the mission field and they're like, don't even worry about your family. Don't worry about how God will provide. And there is a time to do that. You know, you know what it is when God clearly shows you that that applies to your situation and you better be right. Cause if you're wrong, you put your whole family on the line. Like it's such a huge issue. Like I would have to absolutely know God was telling me to do that. Otherwise I'm going to go to the default rule, which is provide for your family. So you could do that and still do ministry on the side. Now you might feel like, but I need to do more. I need to do more. I'm not so sure. <clears throat> I was thinking about this the other day and it was about Paul, the apostle being a tent maker. You know, a lot of people who support my ministry, you guys enable me to do this full time. This is what I do all the time. I study all the time so I could produce content and hopefully bless people. And it seems like the most efficient thing, like the point at which it became like self-sustaining. It was like, yes, I could just do this. That's all I do is prep, prep, prep teach, 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 prep, 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 teach, teach, teach. And, and it means that over the next course of, you know, 20, 30 years, I'm going to kick out so much content, helping people learn to think biblically. And, and it would, it would seem to these people, to those of you who support me, it would seem like it's a tragedy if I had to say work a full-time job or even like 20, 25 hours a week, in addition to all that I'm doing, it would slow me down a lot. And I would, I would think I'd agree with you on that, but here's a weird thing. Paul, the apostle had a more important ministry than me. And he made tents when he was in Corinth. Why, why did he make tents? All he had to do was ask people for more support and they probably would have given it to him, but he felt that for his evangelistic outreach in that environment, he wouldn't ask. And he, he was clear. He goes, I have a right. I could ask, but I won't because of the way I want you to hear the gospel because of your environment, I, you need to hear it this way without me asking anything. And so he, he spent hours and hours building tents that could have been spent preaching and evangelizing Paul, the apostle. If, if that's okay for him and God set him up as an example, then it's okay for you. And so, you know, God may provide your situation. I've had plenty of times where I was, um, I was, I was doing youth ministry, working a full-time job apart from the church, not getting paid a penny where I was doing, uh, you know, teaching Wednesday services, doing Friday night uh, events with the students, Sunday mornings and every other youth thing you can, you can imagine. It was just, I, and I was single at the time. So it was easier, right? I'd work full-time. I would go, I would go home and any day I wasn't at church, I was studying or prepping for something that where I was at church. That was it. Saturday, the entire day I spent studying and preparing for Sunday morning because I didn't have time the other days. That was totally fine. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, both scenarios are fine. Unless God is clearly showing you something, I think you need to prepare, you need to take care of your family as a top priority 
1 Timothy 5, 8. And when God opens the door, you step through when it's, when it looks secure. Uh, that seems like wisdom to me. There's a time where Jesus sent the apostles out with nothing. I know, but that doesn't mean he's sending everybody out with nothing. There were lessons being taught in that scenario. The general rule is a man needs to provide for his family.